Once upon a time, there was a land known to some as. You are at the 36th District Court. You are at 36th District Court. Within this 36th District Court was a fabulous judge known as E. Lenise Bryant. She ruled her courtroom firmly but fairly, commanding respect and decency from all who entered. You are at the 36th District Court. You are at 36th District Court. Are at 36th District Court. You have logged into 36th District Court. You are no longer in your bedroom. You are no longer in your living room. You're no longer in your dining room, your kitchen. You're no longer there. Therefore, I expect that you will act accordingly. Despite all the warnings, some people still refuse to follow the rules. But she always handles them with diplomacy. Mr. Eccles, that's not a good screen picture of you with a whatever that is hanging out your mouth. So you might want to just keep your video on because that's not going to give me a good image. I don't know what you're... Oh, no, I'm, I'm no, 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 listen. Listen to me. It's not requiring a conversation. I don't know what you're appearing for today, but when I see you with, when I see that picture with you with some just hanging out your mouth, it doesn't put me in a good place. So you might want to just keep your camera on. I'm going to put you in the waiting room, but you might want to just keep your camera on so that I don't see that picture when I bring you out of the waiting room. All right? Can I speak? Can I speak? No, no, you can't, sir, okay. because I'm just telling you what I'm telling give, I'm giving you some good advice right now. Okay. I'm going to put you in the waiting room. Unfortunately, sometimes diplomacy doesn't work, and she has to remind a disrespectful defendant where they are and who is in charge of courtroom 339. Mr. Seals. Mr. Seals, did, did you speak with a lawyer in that breakout room, Mr. Seals? Unmute yourself, Mr. Seals. Okay, can you hear me? If you unmuted yourself and I can hear you. I just did. Can you hear me now? Sir, did you speak to someone in the breakout room? No, I haven't. So why did you come out? Why did I come out? Why did you come out of the breakout room? Because I said, go in the breakout room. Do not come out of the breakout room until you speak to someone. So why are you out of the breakout room if you haven't spoken to anyone? I don't know how to do this Zoom thing. Well, all you had to do is be still. I, I don't know what that means. You, you didn't have to do anything. The reason why you out of the breakout room because you're pushing buttons and touching things. So if you oh, had okay. stayed in there, sir, now you have to go back to the waiting room. You have lost your place in line because now I don't have time to figure out how to have you figure out how to go back to the wait to the breakout room. So well, this Zoom, this Zoom is listen, new to me. We've been Zooming for two years, and this is well, not Mr. Seals. Mr. Seals, let me say something to you. You've been before me on more than one occasion. So one yeah, thing you yeah. So one thing we know for sure is that you've been on Zoom on more than one occasion. Now, if with, you don't listen, don't do it. Don't do it. You can you you interrupt me one more time. And it's not going to turn out good for you. <laughs> and I don't think it's nothing funny on here except the fact that you're getting ready to face jail. So if you think that's funny, you can keep laughing. Well, if I can't, I, can I talk? No, Mr. you cannot. Mr. Tell you. No, Please you cannot be quiet. talk. Okay, I won't say nothing then. Thank so you, Mr. Seals. You might need to go down to your lawyer's office. That's what you might need to do, but that's your problem. It's not mine. Yeah. Now keep disrupting my courtroom, and it's not going to turn out good for you. And you got one more time to do that east side roll your eyes at me, because I'm queen of the east side roll your eyes. And if I start rolling my eyes, wow, wow that's what I'm thinking too. Every time you say something, I'm thinking, wow. Wow, I got up this morning for this. Every time you say something, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Good morning, Mr. Reed's assistant. Hey, good morning, Judge. See what, see what happened when y'all let y'all clients come to court without being in the in your office? You, you need to go back to the other. 
Judge Bryan attended Eastern Michigan University and received her law degree from Wayne State University Law School. However, it's unlikely they taught classes to prepare her for the sovereign citizens she would encounter. People of the state of Michigan versus James Matthew Tyers. The defendant is charged with one count of disorderly disturbance. And today is the date set for a pretrial conference. Ms. Ritter, your appearance, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Mr. Tyers, your appearance, please. There is no Mr. Tyres. My name is James Matthew of the family Tyres. This has been established not only in your... Okay, his name is James Matthews of the Tyres family. Today is the date <laughs> set for a pretrial conference. How, how are we proceeding today? Mr. James Matthews of the Tyres family. <laughs> You've been communicated with, Judge, on several occasions. Sir, so you don't Chris know if I've been communicated with. Yes, I do, don't because I have documents. That. I have certified. Okay, I'm going to mute you. Um, <laughs> you don't have anything with my name, with my signature on it. You don't know if I've been communicated with. You may be able to ask me if I've been communicated with, but you don't know if I've been communicated with. So please don't say that I've been communicated with. You may have communicated with the court. You may have communicated with the court clerk. You may have communicated with the court administrator, but you have not communicated with me, nor do you know whether I've received any communication. If you want to indicate that you have sent a document and you want to ask me if I received it, then we can discuss that. However, you don't know what I have received, nor who I've been in communication with. You may proceed. On the 19th of August, I spoke to you personally in your Zoom court, just as I am doing today, and I gave you the details of the situation. I also told you on the public court record that you'd been served with an affidavit of truth. <laughs> that affidavit was sent to you in August. It was received by the 36th District Court in, in August. It became judgment and truth in law in September. It was also sent to Christina Ritter. It was also sent to the clerk of the court who proceeded to send them back first class mail without any communication. During that communication that I did speak to you regarding this situation, you abandoned ship of the court and refused to address the situation. That is all recorded, witnessed, and videoed outside the front of the court. Oh, no. Since that time, I spoke to Christina Ritter after making five attempts to address the situation that should have been remedied a long time ago because of the criminal behavior conducted by two police officers, one man and one woman. Because Christina Ritter decided to put the phone down on me again, abandoning ship and not wanting to deal with the situation. <laughs> Can you imagine said, why we do that? Do you know why we do that? Because, because you didn't want to address the situation. Really? I didn't want to address the situation, even though this is what I do all day, every day, five days a week, is address situations. It probably, it probably was because on the day that you were outside of the courthouse, refusing to, to put on the, the uh, mask that was mandated by the um, chief judge in order to enter the court building. And then you kept talking over me. And then I, I um, removed you from the courtroom. And so you call it abandoning ship. And I call it maintaining proper decorum of the courtroom. Um, Ms. Muldrow, do you have the file for Mr. Tyers? There is no Mr. Tyers, Judge. Don't I interrupt me. I can call you Mr. Tyers if I want to. Okay. Well, I'm and just making that is the name that appears on the docket. And so as the name appears on the docket, that is how what? I address all individuals who come before can me. I ask, can I ask a at question, At this particular please? moment, at this particular moment, I am speaking to my court clerk and i would appreciate if you would not interrupt that communication 
Miss Muldrow, you, can you look in the file and tell me, have I received any filings or anything from regarding this matter? Judge, I'm looking in the file and there's no motions or anything in here at all. So, sir, we have not received any motions, despite you saying that. I you didn't use the motion. I served you with an affidavit of truth. And last Friday, the 7th of January 2022, you were served with a second one that went to I you. I wasn't Karen. served with anything because last Friday on January of 22, I was on an airplane to Arizona. You, so you didn't you serve me it. with anything, sir. You might have been. It was sent to the 36th District Court, along with one that was sent to Christina Ritter via the prosecutor's office and the 36th District okay. Court, and one that was sent to the clerk of the court. Well, I'm not here to want, argue with you, Judge. You I'm not here to me? argue with you. Can I ask a question? You may. What is the colour and age of the man allegedly on the docket? I could care less about the color or the age of the man. Okay, so here we are. We're not getting anywhere. Ms. Ritter, how do the people wish to proceed with this case? Are you? Do you have a complaining witness? Your Honor, so um, just a little procedural background on this case. It started out as a felony with count one, uh, assaulting, resisting, and obstructing a police officer, which was dismissed at the exam stage, leaving count two, disturbing the peace, um, left for this matter, which is the misdemeanor uh, count in front of your honor. So at this time, the people um, are ready to proceed on disturbing the peace charge, Judge. All right. As so the people's understanding that there is no complaining witness needed for that disturbing the peace charge. The court is going to enter a not guilty plea on behalf of Mr. Tires. Now, if Mr. Tires isn't going, is, if there is no Mr. Tires, then, then, then I would appreciate this other person not showing up for court. So if you're not Mr. Tires, please don't come back to my courtroom um, because the only person that I'm interested in is Mr. Tires. I don't know what his color is and it is of no, of no consequences to me. I don't know what his age is and that is of no consequences to me. I don't know what his race is and that is of no consequences to me. What I know is this, if you're not Mr. Tires, just don't show up. I want to just deal with Mr. Tires. That's the only person that this case is against. And if that is not you, then perhaps it's someone else. But please stop showing up on the case that is for Mr. Tires. All right. So as it relates to Mr. Tires, apparently he didn't show up. Uh, um, Mr. Tires hasn't shown up today. And therefore, I'm, I'm going to just save this case to the end of the docket, as I do with all the other uh, failure to appears. And I will address Mr. Tyre's case at the end of the docket a, as a failure to appear. Mr. James Matthew, um, have a nice day. You never have to come back because you're not Mr. Tyre's. Um, so I appreciate you. I don't know. Come into... Her intuition was all she needed to easily handle these difficult legal obligation averters. She went viral on TikTok and YouTube with her precision shutdown of these sob sits. Uh, uh, name for the record, please. Islam, I self law and master and proper persona, so jurors or heritage of the land. Ma'am, I said state your I said state your name. <laughs> I, mean, I will state for the this X rail. If you did not come to court, if you didn't come to court to participate in court, please don't come back to my courtroom. So um, I, I don't, I, I, I've muted you. So therefore we can't even hear what you're saying. Um, so let me be clear. If you have not come to court, because let me just be clear. If here, okay, well, you have a great day. Have a great day. If, if I didn't think someone had jurisdiction over me, I promise you, I would not even get out of my bed. I, I promise you, <laughs> let me say this. If a person did not have jurisdiction over me, if I believed that a person, that an entity did not have jurisdiction over me, I promise you, 
I would not get up out of my bed. I would not take a time off of work. I would not stop anything that I was doing for that day to come to court to say these things. Number one, you know it's going to get you nowhere. There is no, it, it's, it's like speaking Spanish to an English speaking person. So if you believe, Miss Seely, from the bottom of your heart, that, that I nor this court has any jurisdiction over you, ma'am, don't come. You don't, don't come. Because there's nothing, there is absolutely nothing. There is nothing that I can do for you. If you are not interested in proceeding, in, in a manner that we can understand you, if you're gonna simply read off some stuff to me, it, 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 it's equivalent to me going over to England. Since you, since apparently you all don't believe that you're citizens, I, I don't really care what you believe. It, it is equivalent to me going over to England, getting arrested, and then telling the, the telling the, them I, I don't, uh, they don't have jurisdiction over me. If they let me go home, I promise you, if I didn't think they had jurisdiction over me, I'm not showing up. So do, do okay. So we can try this one more time. If you wanna state your name for the record so that we can have the name for the record, then you can state your name for the record. If you're going to say all of that other stuff to me that I don't have jurisdiction, then then I'm going to I'm going to subside and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the to another case. I am going to remove you from the courtroom because this is going to get us nowhere. Nowhere. Now by the time yep. you've said all of this, by the time you've done all of this, this is a 2017 case. We probably would be finished with the case by now. Probably would be. Probably would be. Of course, I'm not going to give legal advice. I'm not going to say what 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 she should do and how she should respond. Probably would be finished with this case by now. Okay, ma'am, please state your name for the record. Bonita Ayana Davis Seeley. But don't think it's all stress and drama in Judge Bryant's courtroom. When defendants are respectful and follow the rules, she is incredibly kind, caring, and funny. Or is that what you want to do? Yes. Yeah. Is that a yes with an S on the end? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the look, that's that's my grandmother coming out in me when I do that. How old are you, uh, Miss Stewart? I'm 25. My mama 55. Oh, she's why are you telling her age all on, on YouTube Live? But she's the same age as me. Old you old. <laughs> Thank God to people. Oh, you called us old people. Oh, <laughs> right there, Miss Summer. No, 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 no. no. I'ma remember this. Oh, I'm gonna remember this when she when I sentenced her. She called us old. Your mother isn't old, honey. She's not old. We only <laughs> Five. Don't come against us. We look good. Y'all don't even think I'm 55. You, I, you thought I was um your friend. You thought I was like in your age group. Don't lie. Don't lie. Uh, she will go out of her way to help anyone who appears to be trying to help themselves. This has been reflected throughout her career. Through her work with the Wayne County Neighborhood Legal Services, she did similar work in other jurisdictions. She also worked for the City of Detroit's Law Department and as the Director of Personnel for the Detroit Police Department, which may have helped shape her no-nonsense attitude when it comes to people with a million excuses who don't seem to take responsibility for their actions. Oh, he's just too cool for me. I, I can't even, I won't even be able to take mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Is he driving with the top down? What, what's going on right here, right now with your boss? What's going man, on? Man, I wish I was that guy right there. He's the man. He, he's that's with the top down. I just and the and the hat is not flying off, and he got a cup in it. He's doing too much. Uh uh. Call him and tell him I'm putting him back in that room. 
-hmm. And they call him and tell him that the judge is on here clowning him. He, he got <laughs> up there. His hat is staying in place. It, oh, that, that was too much for me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Reed, I just want to ask a question. Time What's down. It? Summer in the city. Back yep. in my getting black and pretty. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what, well, y'all. So, I can't wait to be like uh, Mr. Reed, Judge. Mr. Reed, I want to know was the top down in the vehicle? Yes, Your Honor. From and then, but but the hat didn't fly off. How, the hat don't fly off when the top is down. I had my hat perfectly fitted to my head, so they stick to the stubbles. I don't have hair anymore. They stick to the stubble so the hat won't fly off. Even when you're driving in a car with the top down, probably with speed. I mean, real I'm just... Fast. Real fast. Oh, my blow. goodness. All right. Well, I guess we, we all want to be like that when we grow up. On September 17th of last year, it would make it about a year later, and that's what was his term uh, on probation. The probation department is, continues to be disappointed because the defendant is not in compliance. We had a review on April 18th. We spoke about disappointment at that time. It was adjourned till May 5th. We had another review. This court graciously uh, gave him uh, the benefit of, uh, of reducing the commute, the monies owed from 920 for him to do 46 hours of community service and pay $460. Now, since that uh, four months ago, we're here today for review. Those are the only two issues left. Uh, I've been in contact with Ben a couple times. Uh, he knew he knows that he had to do both, and he did pay the four hundred and sixty dollars. But we don't have any proof of that of the community service. Uh, I looked at the notes. He looks like he didn't go to our department to schedule community service. He knows about it, but it, but we don't have any proof of it. Uh, it's disappointing that Mr. Reed's got to keep defending this person for non-compliance unless he can show proof to the court that the defendant completed the 46 hours of community service. Mr. Reed? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Gotti is correct. Uh, he's been most gracious in terms of doing it. My client has tried to comply with the uh, community service, but unfortunately, he's not been able to find any particular positions that would allow him uh, to be able to comply. Uh, he is severely disabled. Uh, he's trying to work his way into it. And he's trying to imagine that he can do certain things, but then he finds out that he, he's not able to physically. So he's asking the court respectfully, I guess, just to pay fines and costs. I know the court is very kind in terms of giving him the option of doing community service, but he's not able to do it. He wants yes. His mind yes, wants to but his body will not allow. That's not the truth. You don't think so? I don't believe it. You said he's severely disabled and people out here was running with no legs. I mean, Ooh. look. Ooh. What That's... do you mean? If we had an Olympic uh, person yeah. that didn't even have legs, people out here, you you when you watch the 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 different things, people operating blind. We have a blind Supreme Court justice. We got people with no arms. Uh, we got people with no legs. I mean, listen, excuses. Oh, my goodness. Excuses are the tools yes. of the weak and incompetent. Those who use excuses build bridges to nowhere and monuments of nothingness. I didn't write the poem. I just recite the poem because it helps me not use excuses. He is not so severely disabled that he can't do community service. We can sit in a chair and do community service. We can do some stuff. We can, we can go to the Capuchin Soup Kitchen and sit behind the counter and pour the coffee into the cups and do community service. Service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy. We're breathing on this earth. We can do some community service. Oh, yes, we can. Now, the only reason he has those community service hours is because, you know, he wanted me to convert them because he couldn't pay all the money. I don't like to play volleyball, nor do I play ping pong, nor do I play tennis. <laughs> we, I play none of those sports. And you asking me to, to play one of them, to have this ball bouncing back and forth, uh, pay the money, do community service. Come on and pull yourself together because let me tell you what you can do. You go ahead and talk. You get ready. Have... You want me to tell you what, what you can do? 
I just had surgery five months ago. I'm yeah, I remember when I had surgery. I can barely walk. I just started walking. Yeah. Talk when she's talking. Oh. I had surgery. Listen to the court. Go go ahead and give me all these excuses. That's probably the, the attorney is absolutely saving his client right now. In the Houston. Go ahead, I'm listening. You had surgery. That what's the other excuse? You had surgery, you could barely walk. Oh, I'm on my phone. I went down to the uh, city, uh, the, the, the 36th district and paid the four hundred dollars and, and I was trying I've been trying to pay the money for it wasn't on the, the uh the files, so I, I called you, your courtroom, had the lady um, put it in the computer so I could pay the money. I mean, I'm trying to, to, to get it together here. You know, I, like I said, I just started walking. Uh, I, I'm barely getting around, and I am in a lot of pain. I had two surgeries. So I feel, I'm not safe. I have somebody who's getting ready, they getting ready to have surgery, and they was like, I think I'm only going to try to Thank be you, off Cheryl. for about a week, and then I think I'm going to just try to push through and, and, and go back to work, and, and you know, I mean, I might be in some pain, but, you know, I don't want, I don't want the people to have to, you know, blah, 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 blah. Then right. one of my colleagues had a stroke. He had a whole stroke, and then they released him from the hospital on Friday, and I saw him walking down the hall on Monday. I want to kick him in the back, but I couldn't because it's illegal. <laughs> people, people who want to do stuff, they do it. People who don't want to do stuff, they find excuses. Oh, I could barely walk. Oh, I can be. Oh, 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 my back hurt. Oh, my toe hurt. Oh, my the corner of my toenail hurt. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, I got this. Oh. Oh, I got this right here. Oh, this is what's hurting. Let me tell you, you can keep on messing with me. Uh, but let me just let you know that uh, probation, it was the alternative to jail. Right. And therefore, jail is the alternative to probation. Now, as much as I respect your lawyer, as much as I believe in him, as much as I think that he's probably trying to tell you the right thing to do or whatever, I will lock you up. I will lock you up and they will put you on that medical ward. They'll mark your file medical and they'll put you on the medical ward and I won't even have to worry about whether you could do community service or not, whether you can get up and walk, whether you can make it to the, to the comments. I won't have to worry about that because that will no longer be my issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop making excuses because we could sit in a chair and do community service. We could sit somewhere and stuff some envelopes for a nonprofit. We could sit somewhere and, and serve coffee to the seniors at the Capuchin Soup Kitchen. We could sit in a chair and pack boxes for the, for the uh, Forgotten Harvest. Oh, it's some community service that we can do that, that does not require legs. It does not require standing. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect with Miss Green and she's going to see what your restrictions may be in light of the fact that you might have to go to jail if you can't do this community service. She's going to check your restrictions and then she's going to find an appropriate place for you to do community service. Otherwise, it's not going to be community service. It's going to be the alternative to probation. Now, I have people that come in here and they knock it out the ballpark. They come at the first review, they finish with everything. They want to hurry up and get off probation. Then I have some people who like coming and visit me. And they just keep on coming back until my patients wear out. Now, Mr. Seals, I'm a believer in grace and mercy. And every time you have come here, grace and mercy have been in the room. But I'm going to tell you that they're beginning to pack their bags. They're packing their bags. They're headed for the door. And then it's no longer going to be grace and mercy in this room with me. And when grace and mercy leaves the room, you go to jail. So you can keep on saying, I can't, I won't, I can't, my back hurt, my toe hurt. Take some Advil. <laughs> Take some Tylenol and let's get the community service done. 
Get get a scooter. Get a scooter. Get a walker. Get get something else. And he's asking, can he pay today? You know, he has the money to pay, but I, I don't want his money. Okay, that's fine. If y'all know something about me, money is the least thing that I'm concerned about on probation because I don't fashion myself a collection uh, agent. I, I hate when the police people call you trying to collect money. That's right. The court is correct. <laughs> I can't argue with you, Judge. That's the only problem I have in this courtroom is I can't argue with you. For real, Mr. I Reed. I, I get paid to argue, but I can't argue with you. Why not? I, you can that argue. Makes sense. And how do you argue with something that makes sense? I mean, I, I can't know. argue against that. So I'm we just myself. When can I have you at my church? The uh, whenever, whenever our schedules allow, Mr. Reed. I want that to happen because you make sense. Uh, all right. Okay. Now, how long is it going to take for Mr. Seals to get? get himself together enough to do this community service? All I owe is 20 hours. Um, I can do 20 hours. I mean, I can try to find somewhere to do 20 hours. I mean, but I had the cash to pay. I would like to. I, I, like I already to said no to the cash. Don't ask me for the cash no more. I'm, I'm trying to uh, um, get things in order. And I mean, you know, I just want to get this case over. It's been almost two years. OK, answer her question. I, I, answer yours. Her question is, how long is it going to take you to do 20 hours? I have no idea. I don't know how they, how they set up. I don't, I don't know. I really don't. I don't Mr. Know. Schiotti. I don't know. Mr. Okay, listen, listen. Yes. Mr. Schiotti does not have any proof of any community service. Now, Mr. Seals is saying he did, apparently he did 26 hours. Yeah, um, he did. I did. That focus hope. Did you submit the documentation? Uh, yeah, I sent it to Mr. Scotty, uh, uh, emailed it to him. Judge, if I can respond uh, to your request, is le let's, let's clarify things so when we have the next review, uh, we can all come to the same page and hopefully that we can uh, discharge the, the defendant properly. It's on the probation order to do six days community service. I don't want any confusion here. He completed that six days community service. I don't want Mr. Reed or the defendant to try to tie it in to the next batch of community service. That's, yeah. that, the old community service has been done. We're happy, we're satisfied. It's the point that the court made on April, on May 5th, he owed $920, very simple. 460 cash, 46 hours community service. The issue is, is he needs to do 46 hours of community service. Now he can contact Ms. Green, and she perhaps can, maybe he can, he can play checkers and help people in a nursing home. I mean, I mean, the court made a very, very clear distinction that there's a lot of things to do that, that he could done. And um, we're hopeful. Uh, that uh, the defendant can't comply by the next I did. Well, that's just, that's just, that was on the other probation. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. No, no, no. Stop, Seals. Okay, Your Honor. So 46 hours he has to give. He understands that. Right, yes. Mr. Seals? Yes. And how long is it going to take you to do 46 hours of community service or go to jail? How long? I have no idea. But no, no, no. It. We don't want to hear that. Let me, let me just explain. I don't want to hear that. Nobody can, wants to hear that. You just have to say, 46 hours, how long is it going to take you to do it? Well, I'm going to just, I'm going to give them six more months to do it. I'm going to set a review for three months. Three months. Well, how long can you do it? Can you do it faster than that? Yes, I can. Well, well you when I ask you, let me say this to you. Let me say this. Now, listen here, I'm sick of you now. Now, when we sat up here and asked you, how long was it going to take you you would you would not give us an answer. Am I, am you, I, no, I, 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 no, don't interrupt me. You interrupt me one more time. You go into jail for forty six days. Now interrupt me one more time. We asked you several times. How long is it going to take you? Well, how much time do you need? How long is going to take you? You would not give an answer. I, I really need to Samuel L. Jackson say what one more time, Clip. <laughs> Now, when I gave an answer, now all of a sudden, you that don't, that's not the time you want. Well, let me say this to you, Mr. Seals. Grace has left the room. Packed up and left. 
You're going to do this community service. I'm going to set this review date. And if you haven't done the community service, mercy is going to be gone as well. And you're going to jail. I'm sorry we uh, wore the patience of this court, but this court is, is very patient. I understand it. So whatever date you give, Yanni, will be done by Mr. Seals. Otherwise, he understands he's going to jail. Real the court clear. is going to set a review date for Monday, December the 12th. Strike right. it. Strike mm -hmm. that. Monday, December 19th. 19th, right before Christmas. Okay. That's fine, Yanni. Yeah, he can help the good fellows and the good fellow dials and all that and whatnot. That's good. This will be my last time appearing for him on the 19th. Okay. That's it for me. You're welcome. All Anything right. further? Nothing further. We appreciate you, Gordon. Please, Yana, you do a good job. Don't be mad and take it out on other people. Because oh, I never do. I switch right I back. Grace and mercy comes back. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Judge Bryan has done a lot of outreach work and maintains several social media channels that she is very active on. She is very strong in her faith, and she shares the power of prayer and faith in God in her short daily clips. She is also very strong in her convictions. Mr. Allen, I've never been shot. Thank God I've never been shot. And so I don't know, you know, what I, I can't imagine what that would do, you know, to me if I did experience that. And, you know, it, it is a, a blessing to survive a gunshot. And then um, I don't know what type of, you know, issues I may have as, as it relates to, you know, successfully dealing with the aftermath of that. And so my words come from a place of, of empathy and not, not experience. I, you know, I, I don't know the, the experience of that. I just know that for, for much of life, my philosophy is don't let it control you. And, and you know, don't let, don't let it control you. It, ha it happened to you and then don't let it control you and then take you into places that you may not be able to fully recover from. So that that's just kind of how I looked at. But again, especially in a situation like this, I've never been shot. So I don't, the court is going to indicate that you shall not use or possess any illegal substance. You shall not use or possess any marijuana without a valid medical marijuana card. Now, let me tell you this, Mr. Allen, I, I think the medical marijuana card thing is a scam. I'm just going to be honest with you. I think it is. I read your report, and then you were saying that you treat your, your mental health um, utilizing marijuana. And I, I promise you, I mean, you all use marijuana for everything. Uh, uh, and I just never seen one substance that could treat everything. Like, I just have not, except this miracle marijuana that's out here in the market. It seemed like you can't treat mental health with marijuana. Only thing is going on is that Maybe when you hide, you don't be thinking about your mental health. I, Judge Brian is an excellent public speaker and has participated in many events, giving motivational speeches. This quality is often reflected in her sentencing when she is trying to convey a message. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. And good morning, Your Honor. Luther Glenn P38683 appearing on behalf of Ms. Webb who uh, also appears via Zoom. Ms. Webb, unmute your mic and uh, state your name, please. Hello, good morning, Aisha Webb. And today is the day set for sentencing. I assume by your appearance on Zoom that Ms. Webb has um, is consenting to being sentenced on Zoom and, and does not request an in-person sentencing, correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right, today is the day set. For sentencing, the court has had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report. With respect to the report, with respect to the report itself, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections on behalf of the people? Judge, we don't have any additions, deletions, or corrections, um, but I would like to bring the court's attention to page one, uh, where it lists the original charges. If the court has not noticed, um, the original charges continue under the prior criminal history. I did see that. Thank you. You're welcome. Other than that, Judge, nothing further. All right. Mr. Um, Glenn, any additions, deletions, or corrections? No, Your Honor. With respect to sentencing, is there anything on behalf of the people? Nothing on behalf of the people, Judge. Thank you. Anything on behalf of the defense? 
Uh, Your Honor, I, I would ask the court to uh, follow the recommendation of the report uh, for probation. I would ask the court for uh, a shorter probation uh, non-reporting. All right. And would Ms. Webb like to make any statement on her own behalf? I would defer yes. to her. Yes. I, first, I want to uh, apologize for yesterday. I accept your apology. And that's about it. All right. The court has had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report. I am ready to impose sentence, and I will do so as follows, making the following observations. Um, as I indicated, the court had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report. And um, speaking of yesterday, uh, the court will make this observation. Yesterday, uh, when we were waiting to, uh, for the case to be called, and then at some point, Miss um, Webb said she had went to the store. She had to get some diapers or whatnot. I don't know how she got to the store. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know how she got to the store, but according to the report on page three, her driver's license is suspended and her driving status is unknown. And she owes $5,611 in traffic tickets to the 36th District Court. There's no room for traffic violations on this probation. All right, so the court is going to impose the following sentence. I will accept the recommendation from probation for a 12-month term of probation. There's always room for early discharge. However, she owes too much money to the court for me to lower the term of the probation at this time. The court is going to set a final review date. I believe it will be January the 31st, 2023. With the following terms and conditions, you shall not violate any criminal law of any governmental unit. You must not leave the state without the consent of the court. You must make a truthful report to probation on a monthly basis or as often as they require in person and writing over the phone or via Zoom. You must notify probation immediately of any change of your address, phone number, or employment status, and you must pay the following fines, costs, and fees. With respect to the request for non-reporting probation, it is my position that a non-reporting probation is not a probation at all, because then who is monitoring the probation? Nobody. And then people come back a year later having done nothing, saying, I didn't know what to do. Nobody told me anything. Non-reporting probation is just, um, in my opinion, in men most instances, uh, useless. So she pled guilty to two counts. Therefore, the sentencing is asked to count one and count three. With respect to count one, the court is going to impose the mandatory cost of $210. As to count three, the mandatory cost of $185. With respect <coughs> to count one, the court imposes a $100 pre-sentence <coughs> investigation fee. $35 per month in oversight fees for a total of $420. I'm going to reduce the oversight fees for the for this type of probation. I'm going to reduce the oversight fees to $20 per month for a total of $240. On count one, the court is going to impose a $100 fine. On count two, the court is going to impose a $200 fine. And here's where it goes the south. The total fines, costs, and fees on count i'm sorry i said count two but i meant ma'am what you have to be still what are you doing ma'am okay i'm about to sit down I'm sit down now who are you talking to <laughs> what you mean i'm sitting down When the court has discretion to do something and right dab smack in the middle of the sentencing, a person expresses their rudeness or disrespect for the court is usually amazing to me. Now I can do a couple of things. I can stop the sentencing again and require uh, Ms. Webb to come in person since this will be the second day that it appears that she does not know how to appear in court on Zoom. 
I could also change my complete mind and send her to jail as opposed to accepting the, the uh, probationary term. I could do that. Um, but it's a good thing when you do have a judge who knows that some people cut off their nose to spite their face and that they just don't know better. And maybe if they knew better, they would do better. But ma'am, I don't know who you think you're talking to. I don't know what courts you have been in. I know that some of my colleagues around the state, they let defendants talk to them sideways, random, crooked, in all kind of ways. Well, let me introduce myself to you. I'm Judge Bryant, and I don't. You get rude with me, I get rude right back with you. You get east side with me, I get east side with you. The only difference is, it's only one of us in danger of going to jail on this Zoom, and it's you. <laughs> so talk to me like that again. Act like you don't know what I meant when I said, what are you doing and, 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 and where are you going? You walking down that hall is like you being at that podium while I'm sentencing you, and you just start leaving and walking around the courtroom. That is inappropriate behavior. If you don't know how to attend court on Zoom, we're gonna come to court. So from this moment on, all of your court hearings, they will be in person. Since you don't know how to come to court on Zoom, since you think that it's okay for you to keep walking down halls, going to the store and doing all other kind of stuff while you're on you Zoom. Me. I, I didn't mean to do that. I was going to get something from out the living room. It's nothing to get out the living room. I'm sentencing you. And I can make that face too. Now make it again to me. Oh my God, Lord. Yeah, exactly. I apologize. I apologize. You keep going, it's going to get worse for you. It's not going to get worse for me. End up spending 10, end up spending 10 days in the Oakland County Jail. I said, what you go to jail for? The judge said I had an attitude and that I needed an attitude <laughs> adjustment. And so the judge corrected my attitude by sending me to jail for 10 days. It appears to me that Ms. Webb doesn't know what she's doing wrong. It appears to me that Ms. Webb hasn't yet seen that she's the only one on this Zoom doing all this stuff that she's doing. It appears to me that Ms. Webb hasn't quite gathered in her mind what she's supposed to do when she comes to court. And it appears to me that Ms. Webb is in need of an attitude adjustment. So this is what I'm gonna add to this probation. I'm gonna give Ms. Webb 20 days in the Wayne County Jail. I'm gonna hold that in abeyance. If she comes on my Zoom again, with this same behavior, it's gonna come out of abeyance and it's gonna go into action. And she's gonna do those 20 days. Now, this Zoom proceeding, it will be up on, on YouTube until the duration, until the end of the docket. Since you have come on at the beginning of the docket, you might wanna go look at it and say, what was the judge talking about? And then look at yourself and see what I see and the 75 other people that are currently watching on YouTube, of course. Or even better, you can go on Law Talk with Mike and read the comments, too. According to uh, the YouTube uh, channel. Okay, so as I was saying, as to count three, the total fines, costs, and fees is $385. Ms. Shai, there's Mr. Byers is asking for help in breakout room number five. Please at least go to him and tell him to stop doing that because it disrupts my screen. It pops up in the middle of my screen. Yes, Your Honor. With respect to count one, the total fines, costs, and fees is $650, making the grand total on both counts $1,035. You have the duration of the probation to pay that amount. Remember that you cannot be discharged early from probation unless that has been paid in full or the court has 
converted it to community service, and the community service has been complete. Additionally, you shall not use or possess any illegal substance. You shall not use or possess any marijuana. The court pays attention to page four, uh, number uh, page four, to defend this description of the offense. And she said, I am taking drug screens for Children's Protective Service, and they gave me permission to smoke marijuana. The court revokes that permission. You don't have permission to smoke marijuana because it appears to me that it clearly is interfering with your ability to engage the court in a, in a, a professional uh, way. So she can't smoke marijuana at this time. She cannot uh, use or possess any illegal substance. She shall not use or possess any marijuana. She shall uh, submit to a mental health evaluation. She shall submit to random urinalysis. If she is testing with another agency, the court will accept those um, screens as long as they are in compliance with the court's own drug screening process. She shall pay all outstanding tickets in full or get on a payment plan with the 36th District Court. As I indicated, she owes $5,611 to the 36th District Court. As a condition of her probation, she needs to pay that amount or get on a payment plan. She shall attend and complete the marijuana intervention program, and she shall clear up all outstanding warrants that she has with all the other jurisdictions. Uh, which it appears to be three, 41B, 39, and 32B. Those warrants cannot be open warrants in order for her to get off this probation. I am going to set a two-month review, and as I indicated, I'm imposing 20 days Wayne County Jail to be held in abeyance. I'm not going to put her cases in person at this time. However, uh, Ms. Webb, I'm going to indicate that you can come in person or in Zoom, on Zoom. If you think you don't know how to come on Zoom appropriately because it's gonna cost, cost you 20 days in the Wayne County Jail, then you may on your own wanna just come on and appear in person. We're gonna set the matter for 932. That means that she can appear in person or on Zoom. The court is gonna set a review date for April the 5th at 932. We are going to mail a copy of this report to the Radnor Street address. Additionally, probation will contact you at the uh, phone number ending in 2398. Ms. Muldrow, I specifically did not Im impose the condition recommended by probation of the five days community service. I also did not impose the condition of um, not consuming any alcoholic beverage. Those two things I did not impose. Anything further for this record uh, on behalf of the people? Nothing from the people, Judge. Thank you. On behalf of uh, the defense? I was on mute yet. I'm sorry. No, no. It is her witty personality and no nonsense attitude that makes her a favorite judge. I wish you could hear me, Galaxy. I wish you could hear me. But you don't have sound. I wish you could judge. hear me. Can you hear me? I mean, uh, was that Mr. Eccles? Because why? Why would you? Why would you care if I could hear you when I'm not trying to talk to you at this moment? You can send him a message. How do you spell do rag? <laughs> and then he just gonna lay down. I'm, I I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, all right, let's see. Welcome. Oh, that galaxy. Oh, that galaxy had on that headscarf and stuff, right? Okay, so I'm going to send Mr. Esom to a breakout room, breakout room number four. Uh, here, here's that galaxy. It's not going to work out for me. Okay, uh, this is Mr. Marat. Um, can you go into also breakout room number two to see if you can get uh, that galaxy operational she perseveres despite being tested day in and day out all right mr brown except you join the breakout room i, and think, I need Ms. anderson to remove his hat hello in the breakout room and i need miss dawson to take off that screensaver and never put it back on 
That's so inappropriate. That picture that you have behind you is very inappropriate. It's very inappropriate. It's very inappropriate. Miss Dawson? Hello? Your, your picture is very inappropriate. Miss Ritter, I'm Well, I appreciate you. you. Thank you. Who you talking to? I ain't asked you to appreciate me. And I didn't ask appreciate me. You don't gotta appreciate me or anything I say. say. I'm, I'm telling you the screen, the, the thing is inappropriate for court. I didn't ask you whether you appreciate me or not. Miss Ritter, I'm gonna send your witness to the to the breakout room. And if she cannot change that picture, she's gonna be uh, not counted as present. And that's just how that works. Tell me she appreciate me. I ain't asked you if you appreciate me. Mr. No, Mr. Phillips, don't come to court with no Bible open sitting in front of you like that. I mean, it, it's I'm okay with you, but if you were in court, you wouldn't be able to have a Bible sitting open. Um, if you if you want to um, honor whatever your you know beliefs are, because I know I I do honor mine. You can set it to the side, but it's not appropriate to just have the, the book open in court because we're in court. We're in court. We are in court. Which is why she has become an internet sensation across the court channels, much to her dismay. And Mr. Kelly isn't here yet either. I'll put you back in the waiting room and see if um, they come. If they're not here about 10 o'clock, I'll release you. Okay, sounds good. I'll keep going and watching your greatest hits playlist on YouTube. <laughs> and this has been a day in the courtroom of Judge Lanise Bryant of the 36th District Court.
It is her witty personality and no-nonsense attitude that makes her a favorite judge. She perseveres despite being tested day in and day out. which is why she has become an internet sensation across the court channels, much to her dismay. And this has been a day in the courtroom of Judge Lenise Bryant of the 36th District Court.